Moving with the Holy Ghost You're more than enough I'm walking in your freedom now Covered by your grace Witnessing your healing power We have been changed This evening, and uh, what a wonderful move of God we had in this service this morning. My, 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 that message was from God and timely. I'm so glad I know His name and what it represents. And I'm just thank for the Spirit of God we felt. Man, I could feel the Holy Ghost. I hope that you felt it like we felt it. And uh, so, but I'm glad to be back. And for all those who were able to come by the church, we thank you and praying for you. And appreciate you very, very, very much. And uh, just thankful for what God is doing. And I'm so thankful for our church during this time. How you people have just uh, come together and encouraged one another. And just been there for one another. I'm so thankful for a godly group of people that we call a church family. There's, there's nothing like having a church family. We thank God for that. And uh, I'm glad that you're here. We're going to worship in some songs. Brother Barrier is going to preach for us again. I'm looking forward to what the Lord is going to use him to do for us this morning, this afternoon, and I believe in great things for that. I'm going to turn it over to Brother Greg. He's going to lead us in some worship. I appreciate him. I appreciate Tabitha interpreting, my wife singing and interpreting, and of course my family helping. And from our living room to your living room, we're glad that you could be with us, and we're looking forward to what all God's going to do. God bless you. And praise the Lord to everyone. It's good to be in not just the house of God. Wherever you're at can be the house of God. It doesn't have to be a building. But wherever you're at, in your car, your home, let's just worship together. Let's get our minds focused upon the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.
Continue to worship him tonight. He is worthy of all praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just whisper his name. Jesus. Just whisper his name. Jesus. Whisper his name. Jesus. And he will answer you. Oh, yes. Just whisper his name. Shall be given unto us, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. 
We are tithers, and we give our tithes and offerings. We bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. We live under an open heaven. You pour out upon us such a blessing, there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, our whole family saved and walking with God, perfect health, divine favor and blessing. We are blessed going in, we are blessed going out. All we do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Let's continue to worship him tonight. I'm glad he is a chain breaker. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies, oh, you're trying to feel the same old holes inside. There's a better life, there's a better life, if you got pain, he's a pain taker, oh, if you feel lost, he's a way maker, oh, if you need freedom, save him, he's a prison shaking Savior, if you got chains, he's a chain breaker, oh yes he is, thank you all, we've all searched for the light in the day in the dead of night, yeah. oh, and we've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight, that's right, thank you all, and we've all run just ain't right. There's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. Oh, if you feel lost, he's a way maker. Yeah. If you need freedom, we'll save Shaking, say no, you got changed. He's a chain breaker. Oh, yes, he is. Listen to this. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, if you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, oh, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies, thank you, Jesus. If you're trying. There's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. Oh, if you feel lost, he's a way maker. Yeah. If you need freedom, we'll save him. He's a prison shaking savior. God changed. He's a chain breaker. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. Oh, if you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, save him. He's a prison shaking savior. for the chains that he's broken in my life. Amen. Thank God for the drug addictions that were broken. Thank God. Hallelujah for the addictions. Hallelujah that were broken in your life. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Thankful for the pain that he's taken away. God has been so good to us. Amen. He deserves all praise. I want to worship the Lord in one more song tonight. Amen. Please worship with us. He's so beautiful. He's so lovely. He's so wonderful. Yes, and he's God. worthy of all praise tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Have your way tonight, oh God. Have your way tonight, oh God. Amen. Why don't you lift your hands? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. Amen. 
and got your family involved. It's important that we stay together as a church. Even, even though we're not in the building, it's important that you stay together and as a family, strengthen your relationship with God as a family. Amen. Well, it's good to be here tonight. And uh, it was a good honor to have Brother Barrier preach for us uh, this morning. And uh, what a word, what a wonderful word that was. We appreciate him very much. And I'm glad I know who Jesus is. Amen. I'm glad that I can call on the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, no matter yes, the time, yes. no matter the day or yes, the hour. Yes, yes. It could be when you're working third shift and you just call on the name of Jesus. God can touch you right where you're at. I'm so thankful for the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. I'm thankful for Brother Barrier being with us here tonight. We want him to come with us and preach once again. Amen. I know that God has spoken to him. We just want him to come and preach the word. In Jesus' name, we love you, brother. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. the Lord, everyone. What a privilege it is once again to be in the house of the Lord this evening. Amen. What a beautiful touch of God we felt this morning. Thank you, Jesus. And I believe there's no telling what all God did in our hearts today. I can feel his presence here. For a safe place to raise your family. The Lord knows we need safe places. In the world that we're living in, we need a safe place. And if you're looking for a safe place to raise your family, the Rock Church in Morganton, Pastor Sister Chapel, that's a great place to raise your family. Amen. Psalms 114 is where I'm reading from tonight. Psalms 114. Reading tonight, verse 1, Psalm 114 and verse 1. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah was his sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, language. Judah was his sanctuary and Israel his dominion. I want to preach to you tonight for the next few moments on this subject, how to build God a sanctuary. How to build God a sanctuary. Amen. Would you set your Bibles down and let's pray together and let's ask the Holy Ghost to have its way in these next few moments. Jesus, we love you. I thank you, God, for this day. I thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence. I'm asking you now, in these next few minutes that we have together, you would anoint me to preach your word. You would anoint every heart to receive the word of God tonight. We will not fail to give you praise, glory, and honor for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone amen. said amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. I am not an architect. An architect is someone who is trained in the planning, the design, the oversight, or the supervision of the construction of buildings. I have a friend who went to school to become an architect. He told me that between schooling and work experience, an architect will spend almost eight years before they are licensed. I'm not an engineer. I don't design things. I'm not a contractor. I'm not a builder. I have close friends who are, but, but I am not. In fact, the sad truth of the matter is, I'm not very good with my hands at all. I have friends who can build houses. I have friends who can paint. And when I say paint, I don't mean just put color on a wall. 
I mean artistically paint. I have friends who can fix cars. Some people, their ability and their talent to work with their hands is amazing. Unfortunately, I am not one of those types of people. Trust me when I tell you tonight that you do not want me to build you a house. You do not want me to build you a bird house. You do not want me to paint your house. You do not want me to work on your car. I specialize in knowing who to call. When my car needs fixed, I know who to call. That's what I specialize in. Yes. However, I do admire the creativity of those who design, the skill of those who build. Hearst Castle in San Simeon, California, the home of the late William Randolph Hearst, at one time sat on over 250,000 acres. In 1919, William Hearst sent a message to famed San Francisco architect Julia Morgan. The message read, Miss Morgan, we are tired of camping out in the open at the ranch in San Simeon, and I would like to build a little something. William Randolph Hearst and Julia Morgan's design was destined to become one of the world's greatest attractions and show places. By 1947, Hearst and Morgan had created and built a little something. An estate of 165 rooms and 127 acres of gardens, terraces, pools, and walkways. Hearst Castle in 1947 cost $4.7 million to build. The Empire State Building in New York City, it stands at 1,454 feet. There are 102 floors in the Empire State Building. There are 1,860 steps from street level to the 102nd floor. There are 6,500 windows. It took 57,000 tons of steel to construct and build the steel skeleton. It took 7 million man hours to build the Empire State Building. At peak times, there were as many as 3,400 workers at one time building the building. The building itself cost $24.7 million to build in 1931. It stood as the world's tallest building for over 40 years. The Gateway Arch in St. Louis, a memorial to commemorate the westward expansion of the United States, during the 1800s, it towers 630 feet above the mighty Mississippi River. Its foundation extends 60 feet into the ground. The Gateway Arch weighs 17,246 tons. 900 tons of stainless steel was used to build the Gateway Arch. The Gateway Arch is the tallest national monument in the United States. Uh, it was built by placing one section of triangular steel on another section of triangular steel until only the arch was left to complete. Pictures that were taken during the building of the Gateway Arch show men, mostly Native American Indians, uh, at the top of the legs uh, building this monument. Uh, experts expected 13 men to die during the construction. However, not one person lost their life. In my short life, I have, I have been privileged to travel and, and see places like Buckingham Palace, the Tower of London, the Eiffel Tower, Notre Dame Cathedral, the Palace of Versailles, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, the Colosseum, the Sistine Chapel, St. Peter's Basilica. And I know that I do not know much, but I do know that I admire all of those places that I have mentioned. They stand as symbols to the ingenuity of those who design and build. But hear me tonight when I tell you that I am not interested in learning how to build 
another Hearst Castle. I'm not interested tonight in learning how to build another Gateway Arch, another Buckingham Palace, another Leaning Tower of Pisa. There is only one building that I want to know how to build, and that is I want to, on this Sunday night, I want to know how do I build God a sanctuary? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. A sanctuary is a consecrated place. A sanctuary is a place of refuge and protection. It's a sacred place. It's a building that's set apart for a resort. It is the holy place. It is the place of the presence. A sanctuary is God's holy habitation. I'm not preaching tonight uh, about a place uh, that is built uh, with men's hands. Uh, I'm not preaching tonight uh, about a place uh, that is built uh, with wood and sheetrock, uh, with paint uh, and stucco, uh, that has padded pews uh, and plush carpets. Uh, I'm not preaching tonight uh, about a place uh, that you can touch uh, with the physical hand, uh, that you can see uh, with the naked eye uh, in Instead, uh, I am preaching uh, about a sanctuary, uh, a place uh, for God to dwell, uh, a place uh, for God to live, uh, a place uh, for God to abode, uh, a place uh, of habitation, uh, a resting place uh, for the presence uh, of God. Is there anybody uh, who wants to learn uh, how to build God uh, a sanctuary? Uh, is there anybody? Uh, that wants to know, come on, Daddy, uh, do you want to oh, know uh, yes. how can I uh, build God uh, a sanctuary? Uh, come on, Mama, I know we're living uh, in challenging times. Uh, I know we're living uh, in unprecedented uh, times. Uh, but you hear me tonight uh, when I tell you, uh, you can make the place uh, where you are, uh, you can make it uh, a sanctuary. Yes. Uh, you can make it a place uh, for the glory of God uh, to dwell. Uh, you can make it a place uh, for the presence of God uh, to visit. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. You don't have to be an architect. You don't have to be an engineer. You don't have to be a contractor. You don't have to go to school for years. Uh, but anybody, anybody can build God a sanctuary. God desires a sanctuary. He wants a place uh, where he can dwell. He wants a place uh, where he can live. He wants a place uh, where he can abide uh, forever. Uh, he wants a place uh, that he can call home. Uh, as I'm sure you've noticed, uh, I enjoy traveling. Uh, I enjoy visiting places and experiencing culture. I, I, I'm one of the weird ones. I, I like airports. Uh, coronavirus is not going to keep me out of an airport. Uh, I love airplanes. I was probably safer yesterday on an airplane uh, than you were at Walmart. Uh, I, I, I enjoy hotels. I enjoy restaurants. I, I like all of that. I enjoy it. Uh, but there's no place like home. Uh, after a while, restaurants get old. Uh, and after a while, hotel beds get hard. Uh, and after a while, uh, airports and airplanes uh, are crowded. Uh, and you just want to go home. Uh, th th there's nothing like your own refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's nothing like taking that two liter bottle of soda, mm. popping the top, and you can take a drink out of it. You can screw the lid back on. You can put it back in the refrigerator. And there's nothing like, and if you come over, I won't do that, I promise. And there's nothing like laying down in your own bed and your own pillow and your own shower. Pretty soon you just want to go home. And God feels the same way. He wants a place that he can call home uh, during the days of Adam and Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Joseph, God had no dwelling place. Uh, God uh, had no sanctuary. Uh, but after Moses led the children of Israel 
out of Egypt. Uh, God spake to Moses in Exodus 25 and said, uh, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering uh, of every man that giveth it uh, willingly with his heart. Uh, and you shall take my offering. And this is the offering uh, which you shall take of them, uh, gold uh, and silver and brass uh, and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red uh, and badger's skins uh, and shit of wood, uh, oil for the light, uh, spices uh, for anointing oil and for sweet incense, uh, onyx stones uh, and stones to be set uh, in the ephod and in the breastplate, uh, and let them make me a sanctuary, uh, that I uh, may dwell uh, among them, uh, and I will dwell uh, among the children of Israel, uh, and I will be their God, uh, and they shall know uh, that I am the Lord their God, uh, that brought them up out of the land of Egypt, uh, that I may dwell among them, uh, I am the Lord uh, their God. In 1 Chronicles 17, the Bible lets us know that King David desired to build God a, a sanctuary. But because David was a man of war and he had blood on his hands, God said, you cannot build me a sanctuary. But Solomon, your son, he shall build me a sanctuary. But that didn't stop David uh, from gathering, uh, from preparing the material for the house that was to be built uh, for the Lord. Uh, David said, uh, I have prepared uh, with all my might uh, for the house uh, of my God. Uh, the gold uh, for things of gold. Uh, the silver for things of silver. The brass uh, for things of brass. Uh, iron for things of iron. Uh, wood uh, for things of wood. Uh, onyx stones and stones to be set. Glistering stones uh, and of diverse colors uh, and all manner of precious stones uh, and marble stones uh, in abundance. Uh, why, David? Uh, because the house uh, that is to be built for the Lord, uh, it must be uh, exceeding magnificent. David said, uh, it's not just any old house that we're talking about. It's not the house down the street. It's not your house. It's not my house that we're talking about. It is the house that is to be built for the Lord. It is the house where the presence of God is going to abide. It is the place where the glory shall dwell. And after seven years of building God's house, Solomon concluded his dedicatory prayer. Now, therefore... Arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priest, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let thy saints rejoice in goodness, O Lord God. Turn not away the face uh, of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David, thy servant. Uh, and your Bible records uh, that when Solomon uh, had made an end uh, of praying, uh, that the fire came down uh, from heaven uh, and consumed uh, the burnt offering uh, and the sacrifices. Uh, and the glory of the Lord uh, filled uh, the house. Yes. Amen. So that the priest uh, could not enter into the house of the Lord uh, because the glory had filled uh, the house. Uh, God uh, had made the temple, the house uh, that Solomon had built. Uh, God uh, had made it uh, his tabernacle. Uh, God uh, had made it uh, his sanctuary. Uh, if Solomon uh, didn't know before, uh, he knew right then and there uh, that there was more uh, to a sanctuary than just a pretty building. It was more than just gold and silver. It was more than just brass and iron and stones. That's not what gold didn't make it a sanctuary. Silver didn't make it a sanctuary. Iron and brass and precious stone didn't make it a sanctuary. But the temple, it had to become the place of God's abode. It had to become his habitation. It had to become his resting place. Yes. A place where he could dwell and live forever. Amen. Yes. 
So the question tonight that begs to be asked is how, how can I build God a sanctuary? How can you build God a sanctuary? Daddy, how can you make your house a sanctuary? Mama, how can you, young person, how can you make that place where you live a sanctuary? The good news tonight is it doesn't require gold and it doesn't require silver and it doesn't require precious stone. It doesn't require schooling. It doesn't require work experience. But I believe the psalmist let us know in our text tonight when he said Judah was God's sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Names in the Bible, names especially in the Bible, they mean something. Mm -hmm. Usually it was, it was the result of something that had happened. There was a story behind the name. And we find that name Judah recorded for the very first time in Genesis 24 and 35 when Jacob's wife Leah gave birth to her fourth son and she said, Now will I praise the Lord. And therefore the Bible says she called his name Judah. Judah means may God be praised. And in our text tonight, the psalmist said, Judah was God's sanctuary. And I'm going to preach to you on this Easter Sunday night that praise and worship is how you build yes. God a yes. sanctuary. Yes. You don't need a hammer yes. to build God a sanctuary. Yes. You don't need a screwdriver to build God a sanctuary. Yes. You don't need wood and sheetrock. You don't yes. need paint and carpet and tile. and You don't need any of that oh. to build God a sanctuary. All you need is a little praise. All you need yes. is a little worship. Amen. And when you praise Him, and when you worship Him, you are building God a sanctuary. Yes. You are building God a place where He can dwell. You are building God a place where His presence can abide forever. Amen. Yes. You know how you feel. We all know how we feel when we enter into a home and you don't feel welcome. You can feel it. You know you're not wanted. You walk in and, and it's tense. The atmosphere, it, it's not right. And the sense is they don't want me here. I don't belong. Can I tell you that God, he has feelings too. Mom. And he knows, he knows when he comes in to a room and he's not wanted. Mm -hmm. He knows when he comes into a room and, and, and he's not welcome. He knows when he comes into a room and there's a little pushback on him. He knows that feeling, just like you know that feeling. He knows that feeling. And can I tell you, what makes God uncomfortable is a home, is a sanctuary, is a church house, is a vehicle, is a workplace where God, where there's no praise and there's no worship that's going up. But let me tell you, what spreads out the welcome mat for God is within, when a little praise goes up. Amen. Is when a little worship goes yes. up. Yes. Every time you clap your hands, you are building God Hallelujah. a sanctuary. Every time you lift your hands, you are building God a sanctuary. Amen. Every time you say hallelujah, every time you say praise you Jesus, every time you say glory to God, you are building God a sanctuary. Amen. Amen. Several years ago, I heard, I heard a minister tell the story about a large national meeting that he was in. And he said in that meeting, that night, the glory of God came down. The presence of God 
filled that room. Amen. The schedule went out the window. God took over. It was all about giving him more, giving him praise. And when that night was over, he was walking back to the hotel from the convention center. He was with an elder minister. He was with a statesman. A man was put together. But that night, when the glory of God came down, his tie was loose, his hair was disheveled, his coat was wrinkled. Uh, and they got on the elevator that night to go up to their room. And, and joining them on the elevator was a couple. It looked like they had just come from dinner. She looked pretty. He looked good. And here they are riding up to their room uh, and their floor. And, and, and that couple began to talk among themselves. Uh, wasn't that a bunch of foolishness tonight? What, 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 what wasn't that just, there was, that was unnecessary. There, there was no need uh, for any of that. Uh, and it dawned on that preacher. They were in the same service uh, that I was in. Uh, and here was that older minister. He was off to the side and disheveled. And he had just spent time uh, worshiping God. Uh, and it was almost as if he couldn't hear what they were saying. Uh, and it came to his floor. Uh, and the elevator door opened. Uh, and he began to step out of that elevator. And it was like it dawned on him uh, the conversation uh, that had been happening. Uh, and he spun uh, on his heels uh, as he was walking out of that elevator. Uh, and he said to that couple, uh, you show me a church uh, that doesn't worship. Uh, and I'll show you a church uh, that doesn't have babies. Uh, God shut Michael's womb uh, because she made fun uh, of David's worship. Uh, and you show me a church uh, that doesn't worship. Uh, and I'll show you a church uh, that's not having revival. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what it was? Uh, it was David bringing the ark of God home. Uh, it was David who said, how shall the ark of God uh, come to me uh, in Saul's reign? Uh, he never inquired at the ark of God. Uh, and David said, uh, we can't have church uh, without the glory of God. Uh, we can't have church uh, without the presence of God. Uh, we can't have church uh, without the anointing. Uh, how uh, shall the ark of God uh, come to me? Uh, it's going to come uh, on the shoulders of priests. Uh, and every seven steps, uh, David said, Stopped, and he began to worship. He offered sacrifice. And he began to praise God. Seven more steps. And he worshipped. And he sacrificed. And he praised. Seven more steps. And he praised. And he worshipped. And he sacrificed. All the way Amen. to Jerusalem. Yes. And when he came into the city. He Bless the people. He sent them home. And he was on his way to his own house. He reached for that door. And it was pulled open. And standing there in the doorway was Michael, his wife. And she looked at David. And she said, oh, how glorious was the king of Israel today. David, you uncovered yourself in the eyes of the handmaidens of Israel. And David, here he was, astonished. And he looked at Michael. And he said, Michael, what? What's wrong with you? We're talking about the glory of God. We're talking about the presence of God. We're talking about the spirit of God. We're talking about the ark of the covenant. My call, if you think that was something today, you ought to wait till tomorrow because I'll do even more tomorrow. It's the glory of God. I'm interested in building God. A sanctuary. Yes. I'm interested in building God a place for His glory to abide forever. Amen. Yes. Where did David learn? Where did David learn how to build God a sanctuary? I think David learned on the backside of nowhere. Just a few sheep. Would you hear me now? All by himself. I can build God. 
the sanctuary. I don't need I don't need a church house. I don't need I don't need carpet. I don't need paint. I don't need a piano. I don't need drums. All I need is my voice. And all alone, all alone, all alone, I can build God a place where his glory can dwell. Yes. We're living in unprecedented times. We're all trying to navigate this. Nobody knows the future. I'm a preacher. I'm trying to figure it out with my own family. How do we do this? And you're not traveling with me. They're at home, just like you are. But I'm going to tell you today, you don't need a physical building to build God a sanctuary. Yes. Daddy, in fact, I'm going to tell you it's time. It's long past time that you gather your family together and you tell them, you gather them close mm -hmm. and say from this night on, this house is the sanctuary. Amen. Amen. We're going to make this a place where the glory of God, don't get me wrong, when all of this is over, we're coming back to church. We're coming back together. We're gonna, and can you imagine what that first service is going to be like together when we're all together worshiping God? Amen. But that's not going to stop your house from becoming a, a place where the glory of God feels welcome. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Where God knows this is my place. This is my house. They want me here. David learned I don't need to be with other people. But with my voice, I can build God a sanctuary. He would say things like, I, I will bless the Lord at all times. At all times, I will bless the Lord at all times. I'll bless him on a Sunday night Amen. when we're singing together and the glory of God is there and there's liberty to worship. I'll bless him and I'll bless him if I'm at home alone. I will bless the Lord. I will bless him if everything's going right in my world. And I'll bless him if everything's wrong. I'll bless him if I've got my job. And I'll bless him if I've got a pink slip. I'll bless him if I've got money for groceries. And I'll bless him if there's no groceries in the refrigerator. I will bless him if I'm healthy. And I will bless him if I'm sick. I will bless the Lord. I'll bless him in good times. Times, and I'll bless him in bad times. I'll bless him when I'm up. I'll bless him yes. when I'm down. I'll bless him when the sun's shining. Yes. I'll bless him when the rain is falling. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. He would say, I shall yet. I shall yet praise him. He would say, my heart is fixed, O oh God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and I will give praise. I will praise you among the people. I will sing unto you among the nations. What are you doing, David? What are you doing, David? What are you doing, David? What are you doing, Daddy? What are you doing, Mama? What are 
are you doing, elder? What are you doing, young person? I'm building God. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm building God. I'm not building him a Golden Gate Bridge. He's not interested in a Golden Gate Bridge. I'm not building him a Washington Monument. He's not interested in a Washington Monument. I'm building God a sanctuary. I'm building him a place where his glory can dwell. I'm building him a place where his presence. David asked the question, how shall the ark of God come to me? The answer was, with my praise and with my worship. Mm. How shall the presence of God come to me? How in this coronavirus, global pandemic, how at home alone, how can the glory of God come to me? How, the, how can the presence of God come to me? I'll tell you how. It's with your praise. It's with your worship. There ought not a day go by that you don't stop somewhere in the course of your day in your home and say, I just want you to know that I love you. I just want you to know that I worship you. I just want you to know that I praise you and I give you glory. What are you doing when you do that? I'll tell you what you're doing. You're opening your front door and saying, God, you're welcome. Yes. Amen. Amen. You're welcome. Musicians come. Thank you, Jesus. David would say, my lips shall utter praise. He would say, I will praise you yet more and more. He would say, let my soul live. And it shall praise you. Psalm 150, he would say, praise you the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with a sultry and heart. Praise him with the temple and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him. I feel the Holy Ghost. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. A preacher, what do I do? I don't have cymbals. I don't have string instruments in an organ. I don't have a trumpet in my home. Don't worry. He would conclude by saying, let everything that hath breath. Is there breath in your body? You may not have a trumpet. Do you have breath in your body? You may not have a piano in your living room, but do you have breath in your body? You are without excuse for everything that hath breath. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Come on, sir. I think you ought to slip out of that couch right now. You ought to put both of your knees on the ground and you ought to build God a sanctuary right now. Come on. As they begin to sing, come on, man. Come on, sister. You ought to slip out of that chair right now. You ought to push away from your dining room table. You ought to fall to your knees. Lift your hands and let the 
tears stream down your face and say, okay, God, okay, God, okay, God, you've given me a word. I'm going to build you a house. I'm going to build you a house. Backslider, right where you're at. Right where you're at. Come on. You don't need me to lay hands on you. Right where you're at. You know how to speak in tongues. You want to raise your hands. Repent of your sin. Ask God to forgive you. And let Him gloriously refill you with the Holy
Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. This time may be a bit crazy. This time may be a bit unknowing. But this one thing I do know. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is a spirit. No matter where you're at, you can call on him. No matter where you're at, you can make a sanctuary for Jesus. If you're driving in your car, you can make a sanctuary for the Lord. If you're at your house, in your bedroom, sitting on your couch, wherever you're you can turn that into a sanctuary. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God, church. Amen. Let's use this time. Let's use this time of what the world calls quarantine. Yet let's use this time to get closer to Jesus. Let's build that relationship with him that maybe some of us never really had. Let's take the time to know who God is. Let's take the time to seek his face and get closer to him. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What a wonderful message. Brother Barry, we appreciate him. Thank him so very much for being with us here this morning and tonight also. We just want God's will to be done through this situation. And we just desire to get closer to him. Amen. Each and every day. One more time, we want to go to the Lord in prayer. And just ask that God's will be done. Amen. I know the needs. If you have a need, why don't you just lift your hands up in your and wherever you're at. Amen. Let's lift up our voice. God, we thank you tonight, Lord. We thank you for everything, God, that you've done, Lord. Everything that you're doing. We just desire your will to be done, Lord. God, touch each and every heart, God. Each and every mind. Every family, Lord. Every mother, God. Every father, Lord. Every young person that's striving to live for you. We just want to get closer to you, Lord, and seek your face. We love you tonight, and we thank you. And we give you all praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.